Hello everybody. Um, I wanted to do a sh somewhat short video on how knowing stuff about electronics can possibly save a gig. And I have a couple examples that I want to talk about. This is kind of compiled from, you know, the last 40 years or so of doing gigs. And um, so I'll start with the oldest one and then and then move forward to the newer one. But um, and then I have a couple of things, comments that I wanted to make at the end. So anyways, um, back in the, I guess the 1980s or something, I was, I was playing in this one band with some, some friends of mine and we had a gig at a um, kind of a rural location. I think it was a barn or something and somebody was bringing a PA. So we just had to bring our, our amps um, and, and they had a PA there. So when we got there, they had a snake, um, you know, from the, the main mixer to the, to the stage and somehow they had some kind of, they, they were missing some kind of cable that would connect the output of the mixer to the power amps on stage and power the PA and everything. So um, without that, we basically would not, would not have a PA. And, and I, I had my set of tools with me. I, I usually bring tools to a gig, um, uh, uh, screwdrivers, wrenches, wire cutters, solder, soldering iron, a, a multimeter. And I was able to, I, I opened up the snake and I was able to wire in, I, I took a guitar cord or something. I was able to, you know, cobble something together to make the uh, connection from the snake box to the power amps so that the uh, uh, PA would work. So, um, so that was one instance where knowing, you know, what, what cable they needed, um, I, I, I was able to rig something up to, to make it work. So that was the first story. Um, then some more recent stories. So there's this band I play with in Cleveland called, called Pieces of Eight, uh, eight piece band with a horn section. Um, been together like 44 years or so. I've been posting videos from gigs and um, lots of fun. And with that band, I, I play guitar most of the time and I play, I use a Boss uh, GT6 multi effects pedal board. And on one gig I had a, um, like, a like a spare power supply I don't think it was a boss one. It, it was it was something I forget what happened to the original power supply. I might have loaned it to a friend of mine who also had the same pedal, so I, I was able to get the same type of thing. The interesting thing about the GT6 um, effects thing is it's powered with a with it with an AC supply. So what's coming into the unit is actually is actually an AC voltage, not not the DC, and it's like 17 volts. It, you know, it's kind of an oddball voltage, but anyways. The, the cord coming out of the wall adapter was, was getting a little bit frayed and I kept meaning to uh, tape it up or you know fix it and I, I didn't get around to it. And on the gig, I believe the two um, output wires, you know, shorted together and, and, and it blew the fuse inside the uh, wall adapter and I, and I didn't have a spare. <laughs> so um, what I did was I, I cracked open the case. It's, it, the supply was basically just a transformer and a fuse and then the AC output going to the, the um, um, a GT6. And I, I know you're not supposed to do this, but I wired across the fuse. The fuse had blown because the, the output wires were, were shorted. So the transformer was still fine. So I figured if I just, you know, you know, fix the, the wires <coughs> uh, good enough to get to the gig, it, it would work. And, and that's what I did. So I was able to, to fix the power supply. I had to solder some, some stuff or whatever, but, I got it working. So anyways, I was able to get through the gig and, and so use my um, GT6 and have all my effects and everything. So um, then there was another band I was playing with um, called called the Swamp to Jersey. They're a, they're a, a um, Springsteen tribute band in, in Cleveland. Um, you know, fun band, uh, uh, great people. And we were doing a gig somewhere where um, the keyboard player had like a MIDI controller and then he had to run a MIDI cable from that keyboard to sound modules. And we got to this club and he didn't have any, any, any MIDI cables at all. And um, so we were really kind of stuck and we were kind of far away from anybody's house. So we couldn't run out and get a cable. Um, but I, I had some, I had some spare wire in my car and um, I think some paper clips and on the MIDI connector, um, I don't have a MIDI cable here, but if you look at a MIDI connector, there's five pins almost in like a, like a semicircular fashion. Really, you can get by with only two of the pins. There's, you know, the, the, the MIDI, um, interface will operate with just like two wires out of those, uh, five. Um, so anyways, I rigged up a paper clip <laughs> in the two, um, uh, uh, connections, um, on his sound module and on the keyboard, hooked it up with some wire. And I made a really ugly makeshift MIDI cable, but it worked. 
and he was able to play his keyboards and get through the gig. So, so that and 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 they thought that was pr pretty wild <laughs> to get that working with paper clips and everything. So, and then what's funny is there was another gig with the same band I did, and and this wasn't necessarily uh, saving the gig, but it, it it was saving someone's uh, ride home. Uh, basically, the uh, drummer. Um, after a gig, he, he couldn't get his car started. And he, he was asking me if I knew anything about cars, which I don't know a whole lot about cars, basically. But his um, his car key, the plastic backing on the key had, had broken off. So he basically just had the, had the key only. And he was trying to start the car, you know, with, with that key. And, and the car would crank, but it just wouldn't start. And I thought about it for a while. And I thought, you know, these newer cars and these newer keys have some kind of transponder in the plastic section on the back of the key and I and I thought there's probably some chip or chip or something in that plastic section that that uh, communicates with the column and if the car doesn't see that chip it thinks you have a counterfeit key or you're trying to you know you know start the car w w with a makeshift key so I told him he he had told me the, the 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 key had broken apart and I asked him if he had the back you know fob section and he did it was in his car somewhere else and I said look get that and and hold it together while you crank the car and it might start. So he did that and it and, and it started up. So there was some kind of chip or um, like RFID sensor or something in the back section of the key. So that wasn't necessarily saving a gig, but it was, you know, he, he would have had to leave his car there. It was actually like an out of town gig. It was, I think, I think a couple hours away. So um, that was kind of a lucky, you know, thing that I thought of and it actually, you know, you know, worked. Um, Another thing, okay, so this other band I play with, um, I, I play in this power trio. I, I posted some uh, videos on, on YouTube of that band um, and my friends uh, Steve and, and Tommy. And we were playing a gig at this, uh, I think it was the Greenville Tavern in, in the Sugar Falls. And anyways, um, Steve at the time had a Vox AC30 amp and the power switch broke where it would kind of wiggle back and forth. Something in, in the mechanism had broken. It, it, it would wiggle back and forth really loosely and it wouldn't make contact so the amp would never turn on. So um, I, I had my tools with me and what I did just to get through the gig so he could use his amp because he didn't have a spare is I opened up the amp and just wired directly across the power switch. So as soon as you plugged it in the wall, it was on. So that got through the gig or that got him through the gig. So. Um, so those are just a couple examples that I, I wanted to share. Um, you know, one thing that's helped me out a lot, um, obviously, is you know, is being an engineer as as my day job and doing electronics. But but also, I wanted to mention um, just some some books. There, there's a book that was really influential to me um, by Craig Anderton called Electronic Projects for Musicians. It came out in 1975. Um, I have a copy of it. I'm going to do a video about that book because it was really it was it was a cool book. It was just it it showed how to build your own effects pedals. And this was in 1975, so this was, you know, this was way before the whole uh, um, boutique pedal craze uh, started. Um, so that was a helpful book because it had some basic information in there about electronics. And um, a couple of things that I also wanted to mention is. Uh, it, it helps to bring tools to a gig, you know, just a set of hand tools, a screwdriver, pliers, you know, wire cutter. Um, if, if you can bring a soldering iron and solder and a, and a multimeter, those can sometimes come in handy too. I usually bring two of everything to every gig. So if something breaks, I usually just, just uh, um, swap it out. So if I'm playing guitar, I bring, I bring two guitars, you know, at least, or two basses. Um, I bring my amp head for my bass. I bring a spare. My speaker cabinet's got, for my bass, it's got four tens, but two are wired to one jack and two are wired to a different jack. So if, you know, if two of them go out or one of them, I, I kind of have a backup there as well. So, and, you know, obviously bring extra cables. So it, it's usually quicker just to swap something out on a gig rather than, than, than try to re repair it on the spot. But sometimes you don't have an option. Like those repairs I talked about, I didn't have a spare um, and I had to fix something on the spot. So anyways, um, hope you find that useful. Um, this guitar I'm going to talk about in another video. It's a, it's a Line 6 Barry X I got um, that I really, really like a lot. It's a cool guitar. And it was another musician's friend uh, special that I bought um, a bunch of years ago. So thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And uh, check out the videos uh, of the bands. The Rock Hall videos are um, pretty good. And uh, 
Thanks again for watching. Bye.